Chapter 3. Trees of Life, Garden of Paradise. Why do humans continually get cast out of the garden? The, first time, individuals were cast out of the garden. Genesis 2,7-8 God formed man and planted a garden in Eden located in the Middle Eastern area known today as the Tigris-Euphrates River Valley and then put the man there. In 2,16-17, God commanded man not to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. After that in 2,22, God created woman as a helpmate, and Eve was perfect in the garden of paradise. In 3,6 she ate from the tree of good and evil amid the garden, Eve deceived Adam into eating fruit and sin entered the world. And in 3.11 God was angry at Adam for listening to Eve so he cursed the ground, this is where a curse of the ground began. They were cast out for disobedience though, the serpent deceived her into thinking she wouldn't die. God forgave them, but he wanted them to acknowledge trees of good and evil therefore, he drove the man out of the garden and marked the trees of life. Although a heart, tongue, body, woman, and man are trees of life, acknowledge being discerned against evil with trees of life. By keeping the commandments, you live a tree of life. God blesses you to become fruitful and multipliable, to be worthy of walking pleasing unto him. Be aware every tree of life brings good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings evil fruit. The, second time, in Genesis 4 colon 2-12 Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Over time Cain brought fruit unto the Lord and Abel pieces of his flock as offerings unto the Lord. And obviously, Cain was angry he thought the Lord had found favor in Abel so he killed him. The Lord cursed Cain's land not to bear fruit. The, third time, in Exodus 7 God told Moses he would destroy the land of Egypt, he destroyed fruit trees during this time. Pharaoh refused to let the children of Israel go. In 8 colon 1 And the Lord spake unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Pharaoh said he would let the people go if they remove the flies and frogs from his people and servants etc. Aaron and Moses removed the flies and frogs. In 8.32 And Pharaoh hardened his heart and did not let the people go. Exodus 9 God brought fire and hell over Egypt. Exodus 12 God decided to kill the firstborn of Egypt to create a Passover, this included the firstborn of cattle. 12.36-37 After the Lord spoiled the people of Egypt, the children were able to go. The, fourth time, God destroyed fruit fields in his way of casting people from the garden. In Isaiah 10.1-19 The throne of King David was an anointed one, God warned them there would be a new king coming which was Jesus. God was angry at the Assyrians of Israel, he said all shall be hungry and unsatisfied. God wondered where they would lay glory writing their unrighteous decrees, this deceived the needy from fair judgment and it wasn't fair to the poorest of his people. He said they broke an everlasting covenant by manipulating, changing laws, and ordinances to control the people. All their anger never stopped, and they still had hands stretched out for more material idols. In their hearts, they intended to deceive nations. They marveled and relished in greed, in turn, the poor people did the same. God went on to say, they were a hypocritical nation and he warned of his wrath to come against the spoil and prey. God used fruits to punish them by destroying fruit fields since they weren't aware of the rock of their strength. God said, And it shall come to pass in that day, that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder, and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Isaiah 10:27. Today you receive the atonement when you accept Jesus in your heart and acknowledge he has power over heaven and earth. He blesses the trees and makes them whole. This is the honorable way to show God you want mercy in life and forgiveness of the soul. When you corrupt the use of trees of life there is a punishment, he will lure you out of the fruit and vegetable gardens to destroy you. Seek correction for corruption is what he intends you will do. Earth will always be defiled with sin never ending, and God would rather have someone of power is suitable to heal the nations. The kingdom of God shall be taken from and given to a nation bringing forth fruits thereof. Matthew 21 43. Assuming God classified corruption as unrighteousness, when it involves changing laws and ordinances since it is consistent with not keeping the laws of the covenant. He doesn't set commandments or laws to have someone distort them. They ought to be the apple of the eye. You must not deceive with unfair speech the hearts of the simple, it is critical for all God's people. Today humans get cast out of the garden for various reasons, some leaders change laws and ordinances to deceive the needy of fair judgment. He sits in the lurking places of the villages, in the secret places doth he murders the innocent, his eyes are privacy set against the poor. Psalm 10 8, some people create illegal businesses and some commit crimes to gain profits. Some religions take advantage of the innocent by distorting facts, and some people murder with intent. Some exercise excessive lusts of the flesh with the same gender. Some defile the flesh distorting principles and conditions of the resurrection committing adultery. Some exercise gluttony of the palate, while some exercise excessive greed. Many replace God and natural resources for material things, and we people don't cast the fruitless trees into the fire as God said to do. Now the axe is laid unto the root of the trees, therefore, every tree which brings not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. 
Matthew 3.10, the entire human race has not stood for obedience in Christ. Although people have corrupted various ways of life, all other corruption came once more individuals had to go without the higher amounts of natural foods. The cost has exceeded the need to pay for natural ways of life. Corruption is at an all-time high, the world is heavily populated with human and animal life. God casts people out of the garden by destroying human habitat. And the other times individuals were cast out are examples of what to expect from God's wrath. Only capital punishment, according to the Bible is classified as a living sacrifice killing, all other forms of murder are classified as a sinful sacrifice. It is highly recommended to examine your instincts with God's word to change human behavior on any given basis. It is about saving rather than ruining lives. Lack of natural foods although people don't value fruit trees as they did 2000 years ago. As a result, many value wasteful products, all while this contributes to a massive flow of waste into wastelands. Assuming God was referring to human flesh the body's lack of natural substances. When he said in Genesis 6:12, all flesh was crooked. During the beginning with Noah, the human diet was vegetarian, and after the covenant, animal meat was added. This means their flesh was corruptly lacking meat nutrition, and still not as corrupt with cancers and diseases. Before they were allowed to eat green vegetables and fruit. Today people have access to fresh fruit, meat, and vegetables. However, many buy processed foods due to time management. Also, the cost of food is high, some people cannot afford to eat fresh fruits, meat, nor vegetables daily. Others just plain flat out choose not to. This means the majority of human bodies are lacking full amounts of nutrition. If this doesn't say many have been cast out then what will? Even the wealthy just haven't been spending enough on natural foods. They too lack natural substances of the body's flesh. You must not dwell in eternal corruption, because it corrupts trees and natural ways of life. The blessings of life expectancy are far greater without the cursing from God's wrath. It is the ending result that can lead to death. Why do the fruit trees heal nations? Amid the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manners of fruit, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Revelation 22:2 Trees have nutrients to keep mankind alive for thousands of years to come. While curses will never be lifted, people on earth in their natural bodies will still suffer from cancer and diseases because of their sinful nature. Though gardens of fruit and vegetables are good for profits, they bring about good lands which are gifts from God. Fruit and vegetable fields make lands great and strong, they flow milk and honey. Fruit and vegetable fields are better than gold, the fields that bear none are more likely to become defile lands. Wicked people desire paths of evil men, while the righteous yield fruit. Prayer of acknowledgement and thanks, Father God, we people acknowledge, when Eve and Adam ate the forbidden fruit earth was cursed. We ask your forgiveness for these current corruptions, we are burdened with since a curse of the ground began. We people acknowledge we have inherited eternal wraths of punishment, for past sins of fleshly corruption. We people acknowledge you are a creator of many things, we give you the human race cancer and diseases for your glory. Can you allow the human and animal species to be resurrected, to inherit the kingdom of God, as angels seeking an eternal harvest and fulfilling your will? We of the human and animal species, thank you, Father. Smiles. Bless your heavenly name. Conclusion God has destroyed human habitat and the earth's natural resources countless times throughout history. He gave good reason first, second, third, and fourth times when people were corrupt. These are times he clarified in scripture fruit trees were one of his greatest intent. When the majority of people lack nutrition it becomes noticeable, and less likely anyone will live longer. The result is the eternal incarceration of the mind. But most people fully believe there is no reason to change the evil ways. And these are trees of life. Why the kingdom of God must become the garden of paradise today. A change has occurred in the preaching of the gospel before Christ was put on the cross people believed in remorseful repentance. What was promised in the Old Testament in, 1 Chronicles 17 11-15, has been fulfilled. Once the Son of God took his reign, the remorseful repentance belief started decreasing. It has become more about forming heaven that is built upon a justification foundation, of self-gratification. This form of heaven undermines Christ's teachings and doesn't encourage becoming justified according to a harvest, which has led to an increase in mental disorders, etc. Remarkably thoughts of a new living God formed here on earth with grace in sanctification, as the higher denominator in a newcomer will send a demon scurrying for cover. Many people have given up, on earth's kingdom of paradise because less remorse results in the consuming fire of hell. But what I have noticed most preachers do have a call to the altar, with a member to guide you through prayer. This works for, believers, the righteous sinner to overcome current and past sin. In Matthew 9:13, Jesus says, For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. This refers to non-believers the unrighteous sinner. Prayer and repentance work together, but there are more steps to repentance. How to get more from prayer with repentance? 
you acknowledge the sin based on scriptures this shows remorse. Then ask God's forgiveness of those sins, along with guidance throughout the journey of changing your evil ways, and name them one by one. After that, rejoice to God and give Him glory for all the things He has blessed you with, and acknowledge the good that still exists in your life. Ah, daily if needed. Mainly a beautiful forest of fruit to eat comes to mind along with hope, joy, and peace. Over a couple of centuries, most people stopped planting trees with fruit, and urban development helped drastically change the forest tree's landscape. Regular trees ruin a landscape appearance and put leaves on the neighbor's lawns for them to clean. If you want forgiving neighbors, don't plant trees that will wither on their lawns. While everyone waits for a new living God, there has been a complete shift in the earth's appearance. Isaiah 32,15-16 says, The wilderness be a fruitful field and the fruitful field be counted for a forest. Judgment shall dwell in the wilderness and righteousness remain in the fruitful field. The benefit of fruit trees is cheaper food to eat, harvest for profit, hope, a righteous judgment, less corruption which brings more acceptance from God. Also, peaceful in habits, sours, reapers, righteousness, and trees of life for healing. With man's inventions, people became the spoil, with spoils came more corruption. The result, fewer sours, fewer reapers, fruit come at a higher cost, less hope, a vengeful judgment, less righteousness, more corruption, no peaceful in habits, and not enough profits from the fruits. As the world increase in numbers, it has not increased joy according to harvest once again, it has been more about price rather than amount. And with the price you have to watch it rise rather than, care about the amount being sold. From my knowledge of sales just watching prices can result in fewer profits. Not enough supermarkets keep regular prices, and not enough customers value the prices to pass word on to other consumers. As a result, most people murmur about prices resulting in fewer sales. The world increases its joy by equaling the number of fruit trees to the number that doesn't bear fruit. You don't dare say it can't be done, just look at the number of trees that bear no fruit to the numbers that do. This is the only way to increase righteousness in a new God's eyes. When trees of life increase, there will be a greater garden of paradise here on earth. In which the new living God can become a custom for the royal coming. Why would he even show up, with more people becoming consumed with material stuff than his appearance? Should God also become content with material stuff? He would need a gun, rifle, electronic devices, trendy clothes, not just a home, but a massive house, a ton of vehicles, catered foods, and plenty of soft pillows on the bed. No. God will come to save the lost unrighteous sinner. The more you exclude him with material stuff, the less likely he would come. Ah, kinda selfish huh? Most will say while grabbing an electronic device, it is what it is. Harvesters in most churches I have been to the focus wasn't a problem, it was a direction. And once you harvest fruit you need a direction to sell the fruit, not to mention the direction is to last an eternity which only changes with current uniqueness. With food prices being high some harvesters lose the direction, but they must sell fruit on time to have enough food to eat. They look for affordable suppliers to increase demands, and with every batch of fruit there are spoils, though it is the smallest amount, it too will increase profits. What should you do with the spoils? You find a reason people need the spoils. Though the spoils are barely rotted, it is the fruit that wouldn't sell. The goal get the spoils to the people that can use them the fastest, and then the spoils become profits. Consequently, mostly everyone you meet is willing to come to church the first time, but damage spoils as in the lost unrighteous sinners. They would rather wait until you value them before they will come, but if you find ways to value all, all will come. Reapers Jesus said, in Matthew 7 15 16 Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. One form of the reaper is the ministry outside the church. Upon noticing churches supporting ministries of this kind the ministers lack the finances to travel, and also lack knowledge and tools for sowing a garden. Optimistically if ministers travel to Africa, Canada, Mexico, or other foreign countries. They ought to carry with them tools to be enabled to harvest fresh veggies and fruits, so they can use the other finances to pay for other expenses. The foreign countries have the best harvesting seasons. Although Jesus said feed my sheep in John 21,15-17. Coming to the church's foundation is based upon free will, and more forms of reapers are people who fall on bad times such as members of the congregation and the outside sinners. A member may be in between jobs or experiencing distress. Some churches have food pantries for those less fortunate in local communities. Also, churches often hire help this may include individuals working as a fallen angel or for a pardon of grace. The churches are growing and there to help the nations in their time of need, which is to last through the church ages. With members, other members may put small finances together to help them out, and individuals outside of a church's community needing help often are helped the one time and then told to go to their local help organization. However, the individuals working as a fallen angel or for a pardon of grace may steal from the church which eventually could bring the church down, 
and then the church wouldn't have help for their community. The church could encourage them to remain humble and grateful for the things God has blessed them with. And promote them budgeting wisely, and avoid forming greed of any kind through the church's foundation. Otherwise, the churches that help watch the company they bring, and if anything does go down contact local authorities. The parable of the sower upon acknowledging American churches these days we have discovered, fewer religious are living graceful spiritual lives. All too often people show their fleshly emotions before spiritual emotions. Some murmur about ungrateful things, some participate in road rage while some dive in with insults. Most have prospered well in life, but for delusional reasons, they just aren't taking it all in. An ancient African-American story tale of a CEO who tells young salesmen about the struggles of the heart. It is like two spirits verbally fighting inside of you the CEO told them. There is an angel who wants to do right, and the demon continually wants to do wrong. Many times, the angel seems strong enough to win the fight, other times the demon seems strong enough to win the fight. Who will become defeated in the end? A young salesman asked. The CEO answered the one you don't believe. Many in churches today have been believing a seducing demon spirit. When you believe a spirit forcing seducing desires, it conforms into an evil enemy spirit that devours and ruins your life. Jesus told a parable that illustrates why some people hear the word and do not understand, have yet to live fruitful lives. In the parable, Jesus compares the hearing and understanding of various types of ground on which seed is sown. Matthew 13 18-23, what he did say, is receiving the word on the good ground makes you hear and understand, and in stony places or among thorns is by the wayside which makes you not hear or understand. Of which, you learn the soil of the ground must be good for God's word to produce a harvest in your life. You must properly receive the word for it to work in the heart. Cultivating your heart for a spiritual harvest involves plowing the soil first. The same reason some people haven't planted fruit is the same reason some haven't embraced spirituality wholeheartedly. Their response, oh, when Jesus comes back, believers will live like angels. Although he has had his final death decree. Do you know why Jesus isn't coming back? Ah, yet too much acknowledgement of false prophets and material stuff. Why a paradise garden ought to be in everyone's yard. To increase hope, joy, peace, righteousness, and natural ways of civilization once again. Not to live any differently, but an individual garden needs to be more flexible in life today. With great hope, a new living God is acknowledged in the world someday. Why the need for more sours? To increase awareness of the eternal harvest and replenish lands of the inheritances. And have reapers change their evil ways. How labor can be increased. Once you increase natural food production for family and friends, the workflow increases, and then people become healthier and stronger. The youth are already harvesting and people of retirement age should start sowing a garden. That is if they haven't already. Americans growing fruits and vegetables. According to statistics people spent $3.5 billion on food gardening in 2013, an increase of 40% since 2008 which is an estimated $2.5 billion. Of all households, food gardens increased from 19% in 2008 to 76%. Mrs. Obama's leadership helped contributed to awareness and improvement for national gardening. Though youth ages 18 to 34 are the fastest growing population of gardeners, this includes people in urban areas.